Hey guys, Darkovica here, and welcome to week two of our book club for Hood by Stephen Lawhead. Um, I am enjoying this a lot so far. I didn't really read as much this week as I would have liked to. I got super distracted because very suddenly I was just empowered with the desire and need to finish a crochet project for my son so that happened and I was like it was like feverish does just need to finish it um <clears throat> I did finish it so I've only read six chapters this week so I'm a little behind but it's fine it's not really about reading fast is it it's just about reading <laughs> So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's reading. Um, I'm super stoked about the chapters that I read. They were super interesting. Things are really picking up. Um, I won't say too much about it in this intro, but yeah. So here we go. Hello, everyone. <laughs> say hi. Um, we just finished... Uh, chapter 11? Oh god, I don't really know. Yeah, it was chapter 11. And uh, that one also had quite a bit happening. I was super anxious <laughs> about Bran <laughs> trying to... <laughs> trying to wait in the monastery. He definitely needed the sleep. It's going to... and the food. It's going to allow him to be able to get away and travel when the Frank may not be able to, but... That was a little stressful, him just chilling in a monastery while he is slowly running out of time. And now, uh, the bit with Marion was quite interesting because, you know, he's still, I mean, it's, Bran has definitely not changed enough. I don't think he's somehow gotten over his womanizing ways. So it was kind of interesting to see him tell Marion, you know, I love you, come run away with me, right? But, you know, and then also I just discovered that Marion is apparently a princess. Um, I don't know if I just missed that in the beginning. <laughs> but um so that was uh, that was super interesting to see you know just her response and also she gave him a bow and arrows so you know, our robin hood is coming you know is coming through um but yeah it, it sucks that he didn't he wasn't able to get a horse at least he was able to get bow and arrows um he's just in a mess i don't this is this is a rough place to be i don't know where Ewan is um, it would be nice if he somehow catches up to Robin, or I mean Bran, excuse me, but you know, <laughs> he's got to try and get to Gwyneth, and I don't even know if he can even, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me, uh, I don't know if he's even going to make it that far, so, yeah, great. <laughs> Well, I have just finished chapter 12, which was a very exciting chapter. Um, I'm very behind this week. I, uh, it's like Monday and I'm only on chapter 12, so going well. It's not about reading fast, right? It's just about reading. Um, yeah, okay, so chapter 12 was intense. I'm still really nervous about how, I mean, I don't know how close obviously this is to the original Hood, you know, Robin Hood legends it's more about ooh, my son is trying to touch my foot it tickles <laughs> um but it's uh it's not really like i don't know how close to the original robin hood story it is but obviously like i was saying in previous chapters in the in most robin hood stories the church is as much an enemy as you know king richard or whatever sense of royalty the hero is against in this sense the frank um, so, you know, I'm worried because he's still sending people to, like, abbeys and churches and he's placing his faith in, in the church in order to save him, which is fine, except that, you know, we don't know yet if there's going to be any corrupt churchmen. So far, we've just had a very, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? They're very altruistic churchmen, right? Like, he got done in that one chapter because of the, the priest's well-intentioned um, desire not to sit. So he didn't want to get, you know, he didn't want to lie and say that he didn't have any treasure when in fact he did, which may have been an oversight on Bran's part. Um, Bran is a bit reckless as we have seen. 
But uh, another thing that I'm actually really pleased with is that the book is very conscientious of the arrows that Bran currently has. He's six arrows and he's broken one, which makes it useless and lost another. So he's four. He's now being chased by five Marchogi. So, you know, it's kind of neat to see that thoughtfulness placed on arrows, whereas a lot of the times, and not, not necessarily in a bad way, um, arrows kind of get either, you know, they just get glossed over, I guess. <laughs> um, it's like they had arrows, they have a bow, and they're firing arrows. They don't really talk about how many arrows the person has. Now, it may be that this book later gets to that point and we're only paying attention to the arrows because he currently only has like six. But that gives me this feeling of urgency that most of the time archers don't have or don't give because, you know, we're kind of treated. They get the, the action movie treatment where you just assume that they're either refilling their bows or refilling their ammo, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, another nifty chapter down. Chapter 13, here we go. Hello, I have just finished chapter 13. Oh gosh, mm -hmm. what did I just end mm -hmm. with? Yeah, okay, yeah, it's chapter 13. We are now right before part two and coed mm -hmm. Kedua. I just heard it said in the audiobook. You'd think I'd know. You'd think I'd know. Anyways, mm -hmm. I'm also joined. Um, by my son, who just, you know, wanted to be part of the fun. Um, well, I'm pretty sure Bran's Not Dead could be one of those books where it just, you know, obviously make, plays you, and then all of a sudden you have a new main character. I'm pretty sure Bran's Not Dead. Um, I was gonna say something about, oh, I, I definitely, like, that was intense. That was a roller coaster. One minute you're thinking, okay, yeah, Bran's gonna be fine. He's, he's very good at what he does, but... It's such a roller coaster to read because like one minute he's winning and the next minute he's not and you're thinking, no, he has a chance at this. And then you're like, he really didn't have a chance at this, did he? And it's kind of neat to see, you know, obviously because in a lot of, a lot of books with heroes, uh, you always have to be careful when writing a hero because you want them to, you want it to feel like they have a chance to fail, right? Also, I'm sorry about this angle. It's the best I can do right now. Okay, I'm, I'll figure it out, but uh, yeah, no, it's it's always like, it's such a, it's, it's a risky business to have your hero because you always have to try to make it seem like your hero can lose or die at any time, right? Even though we all know in a hero's journey, that's not totally likely to happen, or at least if they do die, they're probably gonna come back to life. Um, so it's just interesting to read now, of course, we wanna see how is he gonna get out of this. I'm assuming someone in Coed Kadua is going to pick him up and save him and nurse him back to health here in part two, chapter 14. Um, but we shall see. There was also something, there was a line in here. I found it. As if in answer to this thought, there came a sound that turned his bowels to water. Fascinating. I, so, some of the things in here are just so great. Like the phrases, the sayings, the like, you know, like stuff like that. Or like, uh... Ethelfrith, Ethelfrith, <coughs> Ethelfrith. I think that was his name. Friartuck, uh, saying that he loosed a soft <coughs> fart instead of getting angry. <laughs> Just some some of the lines in here is so so great, so flawless. I want more Friartuck. Where is my boy? Where is my Tuck? Okay, I need Ethelfrith back in my life. But anyways, yeah, so there we go, chapter 13. I'm excited to see where this goes. I'm excited to see how Bran comes back and makes a turnaround. Yep. Okay, well, chapter 14, I think. Yeah, was it chapter 14? I think it was chapter 14. It's a great angle for me. Fabulous, just doing sheer wonders. There we go, now you can see his face. <laughs> Chapter 14 is down, and my goodness, if anything is going to make me confused. Yes. If anything is going to make me confused over whether or not the hero has actually survived, it's this chapter. I genuinely don't know anymore if Bran is still alive. Like, what a really cool chapter for, you know, for Marion, too, who is trying so hard to pretend like she wasn't very close to Bran, because of course she can't. Everyone would assume that he had slept with her like he had with all of the other women. Um, the way that they all thought of him, as she explained earlier on. Hopefully you all can hear me. The trials and tribulations of having a baby around. Um, 
but yeah so it's mm. just very interesting mm. to see and now i'm actually like kind of nervous that bran isn't alive that he's mm. genuinely dead mm. um but we still we haven't seen iwin we haven't seen Charlie Chuck, we haven't seen anyone, so I have a good feeling that he's still alive. Maybe with some bandits in Sherwood, some people who have fled to Frank. Do you have thoughts as well? <laughs> and there we go. Those are my thoughts. Those are those are Riley's thoughts. Would you like to share? Yes. <laughs> There we go. Those are those are our thoughts, our combined thoughts. I have just finished chapter 15, as one might imagine. You might wonder why I keep announcing this. It's partly to help me in editing. These videos are never named anything useful when I take them off of my devices. So me announcing it at the beginning of the video helps. Um, so chapter 15, knew it. I knew Bran wasn't dead, although they had me wondering because once again, Law had tried to sneakily divert my belief that he was alive yeah. by um, starting off with uh, that one guy who wants Elphael for himself. He's all mad that DeBrowse went in and took Elphael, and so he's trying. He's sending his wife. This was said a long while back, and I had to remember sending his wife off to family to try to convince them to lend him the numbers so that they could get hey. the territory. So he's gonna try and get in there and throw out the Frank, and Bran's gonna have a heck of a time. Bran has a heck of a time already. As this lovely new woman said, you know, I also I really liked her. She said, Dost thou ever seek half measures? Whether tis meat or ill, I know not. But heavy was the hand that broke this wing. Which is obviously talking about Bran and, and how just he's had an awful lay of it. And I guess technically you could even say that this is his rebirth, right? Like this is his way of paying. You could argue for sins that he has wrought, you know, being lazy or or selfish or you know his idea of leaving his people behind and just trying to survive by running off to his kinsmen he nothing is i mean literally nothing wants him to leave his lands of elfail right like he is being made to stay behind which is a good thing obviously and so he's going to come out of this probably a whole new human and who knows what this this new individual this new old woman is going to convince him of or even show him in his more than likely fevered state but he has definitely had a time of it like this is some this is a situation that you know most people would consider life altering or even you know just a whole new lesson right for him to be reborn from i was thinking also how interesting it was that marion is you know the only like how how ill everyone spoke of, of bran when they all believed he was dead at least at caddy caddy care caddy I think that was what this was. That's what it was. Everyone spoke so poorly of him, right? Like her father was like, oh, that rogue. Oh, no. Oh. Excuse me. Yeah, everybody was just like that rogue. He got what he deserved, babe. He stole that death from a hangman's noose kind of business, right? Which is interesting. So Bran currently is not everyone's favorite person, which... Fair. You know, he was a womanizer. He was kind of a selfish human being. He told Marion he loved her when, like, not a couple days prior, he had been lusting after some woman at, you know, on the highway while they were going to Lundian, which I found out is how that's pronounced. Not Lundane. It's Lundian, you know. London. Um, <laughs> and once I heard it said, I was like, oh, yeah, that, that makes a whole lot more sense than Lundane. Um... So just a very interesting experience to see everyone speak so ill of him. And it's kind of exciting too because you wonder how is this going to turn around? How is he going to become the hero of the people? Is he going to save Elphael? He's got a lot going against him. Although technically we have we have an opening for him, right? The king did promise Bran, uh, or rather the king's spokesman, did promise Bran that there was a way to get Elphael back if he provided 600 marks. And we know, certainly, that that probably means that he's going to steal it from the Frank and get Elphael back and make it his. But how that's going to contend with our other third mysterious person with his wife Agnes. I mean, he wants Elphael for himself. So we are just in a hot mess. And we have King William away. Yeah. How is this all going to turn out? You know what I mean? Like, also, we have to contend with the idea that Robin Hood is not a happy ending. Uh, spoiler alert. 
most Robin Hood stories are tragedies. So a part of me is like keeping that at the back of my mind is the fact that Robin Hood is typically a tragedy. So is he gonna get Elfail back? Is Marion gonna have to run Elfail by herself, maybe with an heir? Is he gonna survive? Is Lawhead gonna go full Robin Hood with this? Or is he going to, you know, twist it and we're gonna have a happy ending for our dear Robin? We shall see, I think, right? Yeah? He slid off my lap. He was tired of sitting and now he's just lying in front of me, babbling like the cutie patootie that he is. All right, I'll see you guys next chapter. Okay, I have finished chapter 16 and, wow, this is a terrible angle. Okay, I have finished chapter 16 and uh, we have basically just seen, you know, Folks DeBrose and Philip, I think it was Philip DeBrose, they're walking through Elfail, they have all these plans to change the land and to bring all these new things and basically to do what conquerors do, which is, you know, come in and say, hey, your stuff sucks, we're gonna replace it with our stuff. And uh, but there's a, an interesting comment at the end of this chapter, which I thought was really interesting, is when um, Philip says, oh, or when Falk says, to be sure, agreed Falks, God willing. And Philip says, oh, God has already willed it. As sure as William is king, there is no doubt about that. He paused, then added none whatsoever. So we obviously noticed early on in the chapter, Philip it makes mention that their, the uncle or his father is this really wealthy person, right? The actual person who's supposed to own this comet and the reason that, or Kamat, and the reason that Bran is able to get it back even if for 600 <clears throat> marks. So, right, Bubby? Talk to Bubby. You're not Bubby, you're Sammy. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so what we, what we, oh God, train of thought. Oh, right, okay. The uncle, so the uncle whose name I've completely forgotten, but the Debrose that's supposed to be on the lands, he mentioned that he is, you know, that he's got a lot of, Philip mentioned that he's got a lot of money. And so he plans to take all of Wales and turn it into their own land. So they are planning on building these three castles. Now, what's interesting about the, co the last comment at the end of this chapter is I think what that kind of hints at is that, thank you, Sam. Oh, good, we have cat butt in the camera. Sam. Um... What this kind of hints at, I think, is that this DeBrose guy, I think, has, you know, he, <laughs> he intends to try to take over uh, King William's throne, right? I think that's what he's going for. So I think we have some very ambitious people and that Bran is probably going to be the ones or the one to undo them. And there is a very good chance that that is what will maybe bring Bran into, you know, this favorable light with King William, right? Maybe he stops this attack against King William. Who knows? But, I, you know, it's, it's an interesting setup, that's for sure. And a lot could come of it. All right, guys. Thank you for, you know, joining me with this. I hope you're all enjoying this and having fun because I am. It's, it's super neat. Um, yeah, so we have another week coming up of reading and I will see you guys next Tuesday for more chapter analysis it's not the most in-depth analysis but it's just sort of for fun right like I'm not a professor breaking down a book <laughs> um but yeah I can't wait to see what you guys thought about this week and about hood in general and uh you know if the video stops a certain chapter try to keep the spoilers to a minimum for future chapters in the comments below um and yeah I'll see you guys next time bye